This is the second video on Plato, and it's all about his theory of forms, his understanding of what the forms are like, and the hierarchy of the forms, and we'll cover the form of the good in a separate video afterwards. So if you remember, Plato had argued for the existence of another realm, a perfect, eternal, and immutable, unchanging realm, and he called that realm the realm of the forms. He also postulated the existence of what he called forms. Now, forms are like ideas. They are non-physical, they are eternal, perfect and unchanging, and they are non-extended, meaning they don't occupy space. Otherwise, they would be able to change. The things we experience around us in our physical world are imperfect copies, reflections or shadows of the forms called particulars. And unlike forms, particulars are finite. They are mutable, so they change. They are extended, they take up space. They are physical and they are imperfect. Each form acts like a blueprint or an archetype for the particulars that resemble it or correspond to it in the world around us. Plato said, in itself, each is one, talking about the forms, but they present themselves everywhere, so they're in everything. Plato claimed that particulars participate in or instantiate the forms, that the form is somehow present within the particular which possesses it. And one form could be instantiated by many different particulars. Plato thought that it was for this reason that we were able to recognise things that are different as somehow being the same, that we are able to recognise, um, for example, several different horses which are different from each other, and yet we still recognise them as a horse because they share the form horse. So they all participate in the form of a horse, and that is how we are able to recognise them as horses. If you notice... Plato takes the realist position that we talked about when we explored metaphysics in our first video, Introducing Philosophy. So if you haven't watched that video, I suggest you go back and have a look. One particular can instantiate many different forms. So for example, one horse, one particular horse, could instantiate the form of horse, the form of beauty, the form of black, and so on. Some particulars correspond better to their forms than others do. For example, you might have a beautiful rose, a beautiful woman, a beautiful horse, all instantiating the form of beauty. Some things might instantiate the form of beauty better than others, so the more beautiful the particular, the better it instantiates the form of beauty. Plato argued that the forms must exist necessarily. In other words, they must exist, they can't not exist. Whereas particulars are contingent, meaning they're dependent on forms for their existence, Without the form, it wouldn't exist. So they're dependent on them ontologically, and they're dependent on them in terms of being able to be known epistemically. Plato claimed that there are different types of form, including forms of phenomena, of objects like trees and houses and horses, roses, people, and forms of concepts like beauty, justice and goodness. These are the abstract universals that we talked about in our first video. Forms of phenomena are lower than forms of ideals. This is because forms of phenomena participate in the form of the ideals. So, the, for example, the form of horse might participate in the form of beauty. The form of house might include ge geometrical ideas, such as a triangle and a square. Plato argued that higher than all of the forms is the form of the good, and we will discuss that further in the next video. This video has been brought to you by Just Education. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to find out more.